In a previous video, I spoke about the impact different muscles have on sprinting and ranked the top 10 muscles in order of importance. In this video, I'm going to be highlighting some of the most important tendons in the body for an athlete and discussing the role that they play in sprinting. Firstly, to explain what tendons are and how they operate, they're connective tissue which connects muscles to bones. Tendons consist of closely packed collagen fibers with collagen being a structural protein also found in bones, skin and blood vessels. Tendons transfer the force created by muscle to the bone and the force applied to a tendon can be as much as 5 times body weight. The first tendon we will look at is the iliopsoas tendon. The iliopsoas tendon connects to the femur and is the combined tendon of the two main hip flexor muscles of the hip joint, the psoas and the iliacus. In my video looking at the most important muscles for sprinting, I ranked the psoas muscle as the fifth most important muscle and noted how the difference in development varied drastically even between Olympic qualified sprinters and the number one sprinter in the world. The psoas muscle is most active at the top portion of the hip flexion range of motion. Inflammation of the iliopsoas tendon is known as iliopsoas tendonitis and it can also be referred to as snapping hip syndrome because of the snap or click sound made during certain hip movements such as flexion, extension or rotation. Iliopsoas tendonitis can occur as an acute injury or overuse injury with running being one of the main sources of injury, particularly running uphill because of the leg cycle range of motion created when running uphill. The next tendon we will look at is the gluteus medius tendon. Although tears of the gluteus maximus tendon are possible, they are less common than tears of the gluteus medius and minimus tendons. The gluteus medius begins at the top of the pelvic bone and attaches to the outer side of the femur. Tears of this tendon connecting the muscle to the femur can happen with athletes, although athletes are more likely to suffer from GTPS, which is known to cause similar symptoms such as pain at the side of the hip. Next we will look at the tendons of the hamstring. The hamstrings are comprised of three muscles that run down the back of the thigh and at the lower end of the thigh, two of these muscles connect to tendons at the inner back corner of the knee, while one of the muscles known as the biceps femoris connects to the outer back corner of the knee. The proximal or upper hamstring tendons connect the three hamstring muscles to the sit bone, which is located at the bottom of the pelvic bone. In 2014, Johan Blake suffered a proximal tendon injury and an MRI revealed that his hamstring had been ripped off his sit bone and he would need surgery to reattach it. Blake's tear was a grade 3, which is the most serious of hamstring injuries, and despite fears that his athletic career at the top level may be over, he made an amazing recovery and is still sprinting to this day. Next we have the quadriceps tendon. The quadriceps tendon connects the muscle to the platella, otherwise known as the kneecap. The kneecap connects to the tibia through what's referred to as the patella tendon, although it can be claimed that the patella tendon is just a continuation of the quadriceps tendon, since an individual connective tissue from the kneecap to the tibia could be classified as a ligament rather than a tendon. Problems with this portion of the tissue that connects the knee to the tibia is also referred to as jumper's knee, and it has a tendency to affect athletes who are putting repeated loads on the knee joint, which can cause inflammation. The quadriceps tendon connecting the quad to the knee is the most important tendon in straightening the knee from a bent position. The next tendon we will look at is the iliotibial band, also referred to as the IT band. The IT band runs from the top of the pelvis to just below the knee and it connects to a muscle known as the tender fasci latae or TFL. The TFL is the outermost hip flexor muscle on the body, located by the side of the pelvis, and I ranked it as the second most important muscle for sprinting, given that this muscle was found to have a significant difference in volume when comparing non-sprinters to sub-elite to elite sprinters. When running, the IT band stores and releases energy similar to an elastic band, and as the leg comes behind, the IT band begins to tighten, then as the foot leaves the ground, this stored energy helps to propel and swing the leg forward. IT band syndrome is a term used to describe pain that occurs usually on the outside of the knee when the IT band is inflamed or not functioning properly. The pain often occurs as the foot hits the ground and the knee is extended and it can continually get worse as the action is repeated, affecting both athletes and casual runners alike. IT band syndrome is known as a runner's injury since it often occurs because of the repetitive motion of running 
which is all done through flexion and extension through a single plane with no lateral movement. Having poor running form with inwards bent knees can increase the likelihood of suffering IT band syndrome due to putting extra pressure onto the outside of the knee and the ITB. The final tendon we'll be looking at and the most important for sprinting is the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon is the largest and strongest tendon in the body and similar to the IT band, it acts like an elastic band which stores and releases energy while running. During the early part of the ground contact, the Achilles tendon stretches which creates stored elastic energy which subsequently recoils to create a quick and powerful push off the ground. Since this propulsion is automatic, the athlete should only focus on using their muscles to direct force into the track in the initial stage of the ground contact since over pushing can actually slow them down. No muscles can fire quickly enough to create propulsive forces at running speed exceeding 8 meters per second which proves that elite sprinters are relying massively on the propulsive forces generated by the Achilles tendon to reach speeds exceeding 11.5 meters per second. Trayvon Brumel was one of the most noteworthy track stars who suffered an Achilles tendon tear while sprinting and it happened in the 2016 4x1 relay final as he chased down Usain Bolt on the anchor leg. Brumel went on to have multiple surgeries on his Achilles with one being as recently as 2023 but his ability to come back from his 2016 injury and run 9.7 in 2021 was nothing short of spectacular. Given the setbacks that a tendon tear can cause in an athlete's career, injury prevention should always be prioritised when possible and Brumel said that he chose to run in the relay in 2016 to help his team even though he was experiencing pain and already knew he would need surgery on his Achilles in the off season. Listening to your body is important when it comes to pushing yourself on the track, but it's equally as important to listen to your body when pushing yourself in the weight room in order to avoid tendon injuries. If an athlete experiences rapid muscle growth in a short space of time, the tendon may not be able to strengthen proportionally to the same degree, which makes injuries to tendons more likely. The use of PEDs can also be the cause of rapid muscle strength increases, not giving the tendons a chance to catch up, but overtraining can also be the cause of tendon fatigue which will trigger pain or discomfort. To prevent this, the best course of action is to get adequate sleep and recovery between training sessions both on the track and in the gym, and increase training volume gradually rather than jumping into a new training program that rapidly increases your workload. Athletes should also find exercises that are suited towards their body's individual leverages and ranges of motion, since certain athletes having flat bench press in their routine can run the risk of a pec tendon strain, while incline bench press or dumbbell bench press can completely alleviate this issue for them. Another factor that's hugely important for recovery is diet, and eating a healthy diet with enough protein to repair your body shouldn't be overlooked. I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe for more content coming soon.